Alrighty, so scientists are notoriously lazy. They like to make shortcuts for things and I'm no different and you should be no different because laziness is great providing there's a reason and a rhyme for it. So, in science and particularly in physics we like to deal with really, really big and really, really small numbers. So we talk about the mass of an electron, the speed of light, those sorts of things. We are dealing with massive and tiny numbers all the time. And I don't know about you, but I get pretty sick of writing numbers like 0 0.0000000003625. And your reports would become cumbersome if you had to do that. So in science, we use this thing called scientific notation to help us get around using really big and really small numbers. It also helps us when we're talking with significant figures because how many significant figures does that number have? Four, you can really quickly see that's got four significant figures, which tells us about precision and so on and so forth. But let's just talk about scientific notation, devoid of significant figures for now. So rather than writing 0, 0.0000 whatever it is, 3625, we write 3.625 times 10 to the negative 8. That's exactly the same number as that. The times 10 to the negative 8 is just showing us the magnitude or the size of the number. How do I know it's negative 8, not negative 6 or negative 7? Well, I think about how many times am I moving the decimal place backwards. So I'm moving the decimal place and I physically, as you can see, I physically go through and do the skip. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I've made 8 movements back, so I represent that with, it's good from me, times 10 to the negative 8. Does that make sense? If I wanted to write a really big number, so who can think of a really big number that uses scientific notation? One trillion. One trillion. I've met one that we use in science pretty regularly. Think about back to year nine. Speed of light. Speed of light. Three times, for those of us who don't know, speed of light is three times 10 to the power of eight. So if I wanted to write that as a number, I'll represent that as 3.0 just for now. 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8. What do I need to do with that decimal place? Is that a big number or a little number? It's a big number. Big number we can tell because there's no negative in front of our 8. So I'm just going to move my decimal place back 8 spots. So if I've got 3 and it was 0.0, I'm going to move it back. So I'm just going to write lots of zeros here. Come okay, back 8 places. 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that now is my new number. So when we talk about the speed of light, what we mean is that meters per second. Could you see how you could make an error doing that? Yes. You could drop a zero off and you wouldn't realize. So it's a lot easier for us to use 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8. Really, really powerful when we're using really, really big numbers or really, really little numbers. And it also allows us to show significant figures. You'll remember from the homework... Um, can I just... Um, we've got 90 and we struggle to show that appropriately. We represented those 90 with the decimal place there. Yeah, all good. Represented those 90 with the decimal place there. When we really could have represented that as 9.0 times 10 to the power of 1, or just 10. And then someone reading that would know what? There is two significant figures. Because 90, is that zero significant? No. That zero is not significant, is it? Whereas this zero, is that significant? Yes. Yeah. So using scientific notation, we can show our significant figures. Clear? That's pretty much all you need to know for significance. If you're moving the decimal place, sorry, if you've got a really small number, you should have a negative power. If you've got a really big number, you should have a positive power. Physically show the skipping. Happy with that? Which brings us to our solutions for these problems, but I'll do those separately without filming.